You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, well, there's a better life. There's a better life. ministering to us, and uh, we've got a place to worship, amen? We praise the Lord for that. Uh, uh, good to see you, and good to see our first-time guests with us. If you're a first-time guest here at Believer's Fellowship, we welcome you to our service. We're kind of up close and personal uh, in our youth auditorium, so until our other auditorium's ready for access, but uh, hey, praise the Lord, it just uh, makes us closer to each other, amen? It brings us together, um, tragedy does, and so... Here we are together, but we welcome you here to Believer's Fellowship. As you came in, you should have received a, a connection card, and we'd like you to fill that out for us, and uh, we have a special gift just for you, so uh, if you'd just hold on to that card, we'll kind of tell you what to do at the end of the service. Now, we're not going to do our normal walk around, because we're a little tight, a little close, okay? <clears throat> so we're going to do our welcome a little different. We want you to stand and just look around you, behind you, and in front of you, try not to get out of your road. And just uh, minister and hug and welcome and minister to those just right around you that are here today. So stand up and kind of stay in your general area and welcome those to ourselves.
I continue, I pray for the people who are continuing to suffer and will suffer for months to come, maybe years, Father. I just, I pray for them. There's so many hurting. I pray for their hearts. Father, you are the healer, God. And we just ask that you just place your healing hand, not only on our city, but all of the cities affected, Father, God, that they won't be able to look at the situation and not see that you were there. Father, in the midst of all of it, God, that you were there and that glory will be brought to your name. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name.
even better, especially when you're kind of close quarters together. And man, it may get a little warm here today. We're fighting the sun coming in the back window of this kind of crowd here, but we're getting through it, amen? amen. A lot of churches don't even have facilities to meet in this morning, morning so we have no complaints whatsoever. Right. You didn't have this bust out sheetrock to get out of your house this morning, did you? No. Uh, a few of you still have to, but praise the Lord. I tell you, it's been an incredible week since last Sunday. One, just missing being with you guys on Sunday is always, always a terrible. I don't know how many skip church so often. <laughs> you guys me nuts, amen. amen. To be together with you is a highlight of my week, uh, weekend and week out, to have you here and to fellowship together each week, uh, especially in times like this. Praise the Lord, we had a good group that showed up from this campus out at Magnolia to help kind of alleviate some of the, the crowd in here. So, uh, that, that helped out. I gave them all a pat on the back. I don't know if they'll continue doing that for a few weeks, but we'll see. If you see somebody that's not here and they're out there, you can switch with them one week or something. But uh, we pr appreciate their willingness to do that and make that, that drive out there to, to uh, help us alleviate our crowd control situation here. A lot of work's going in just getting all this ready for you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate our church, our members, our fellowship, the heart our people have to just to just do what needs to be done. It's such it is such a blessing. Hurricane Harvey has uh, been the second most destructive storm to ever hit, hit the U.S. coast. Uh, they're telling us only behind Hurricane Katrina. Certainly didn't have a loss of life, but when you lose one life, it's too many. Amen. I think 44 was one report I saw. Another said 46 lost lives i mean that that just may be a number on a on a, a media outlet to some folks but it's somebody's brother or son sister or mother or aunt, grandmother it's somebody's family member yes. and they're hurting today and we want to continue to pray for those people they're they're suffering they're they're they're, they're going to be planning funerals if they haven't already done one Amen. and uh when you go through those kind of things it, it it's it's worse than losing your house yeah. you know you can replace houses and homes but uh the estimated cost in, in, in lives is just incredible. Then you think about the fact of just all the property damages. Someone said over $80 billion, $100 billion in damages so far that they know of, but who knows once the water recedes in all these places what it's really going to be like. Tens of thousands of people are out of their homes. A lot of people are living in shelters still. A lot of people live with other friends or families, and some live with strangers, people that just took them in. Yes. You know, this is where we really see what people's heart is really like and how much compassion. And that's been the beautiful story. I've sat and watched story after story as you, when the news comes on, when I get home and able to watch the news and see some of these, some of them are just, you know, just fill your heart with such joy and, and gladness to see the heart that people have. Yeah. Some just break your heart, you know, yeah. to see what, what people are going through and what they're experiencing. You just can't sit and watch it without going through a world and a wide range of it. Of incredible emotions yes. you know we had as far as I know and that this is I can only know what I know all right in other words <laughs> you have to tell me otherwise we have about three of our family member families and then one family is just regular tender that are out of homes to this date and have suffered loss and had water in their hands Sam and Anna the Lowry's uh, Lori Young uh, my brother he still hadn't been able to get back to their house he's down with Bradless River bottom uh, so there's just you know there's, there's they, they have gotten one report that things are still dry where he was at, which is a miracle because everything around him is flooded. Every house within miles of him is underwater. He had some common sense. I've always excused him not having any. But he built that house himself, and he built it very high. <laughs> it's like on a little mountain in the subdivision when you come up to it that they put it on. But who knows, you know, as water continues right on the branches, what, what, they'll have, what they'll see in the next few days down there. So... Our church and our elders and, and I have decided that for each home that's been dipped, for each person, those four families at least, we'd like to give $1,000 immediately uh, this week to get a check to those people I've just mentioned to help them because it's not easy uh, being in these kind of situations. And $1,000 isn't much money. 
And it, you know, it, it, it's not going to help a lot, but it helps some. Amen. Yeah. Some had to go to hotels and have family near and those kind of things. Some had to eat meals because they can't get the meals, and some have immediate losses of clothing, things like that. You just can't get to that they've lost. And so, uh, however it can be used, however it's needed, that they'd be able to, to take care of that. And if you're not here, you know who they are. Say, so call the church, call Pastor Joe. We'll get a hold of somebody. We have some money for you to help you. I do know that a lot of this, you know, you can throw billions and billions and billions of dollars at this problem, but. I don't know how much of it actually gets into people's hands. Yeah. Amen. You know, yeah. uh, I do know that the average FEMA person who applies for help from FEMA might get four to five thousand dollars on average at best. And so, it's, you know, when they when they tell you all the government's going to do and all the billions of dollars, uh, don't hold your breath too long waiting for a bailout, all right? Because <laughs> uh, when you've lost even having a couple of feet of water in your house, I mean, just the damage to our church alone will probably come up two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. That just kind of shows you. You just never see how much damage can be done real quick. You're talking about almost 15,000 square feet of carpet for us. Wow. Praise the Lord. We had flood insurance. That's how we, we learned that early days the hard way. Uh, <laughs> get flood insurance no matter what. Not only do we buy flood insurance, we put in underground pumping stations, which have saved us from a lot of water and some of the big floods that have come over these last couple of years. But this one... We just couldn't be. I uh, got that disheartening phone call from Phil Dutton about midnight that night and said, hey, uh, we fought what we could, uh, but uh, we lost the battle. I said, well, we hadn't lost the war. Amen? Amen. We might have lost yeah. the battle. might have got some water. But the guys like Phil, Bill Baldwin, Matt Campbell, who led that charge, amen, y'all give them a praise. <laughs> amen. I didn't move to Magnolia just so I didn't have to be on that team anymore. <laughs> but now that I've done it, I'm really glad. <laughs> That's a hard crew to serve on, but I was up all night. We have security cameras that the staff has access to, our security cameras, and we can watch what's going on. We have one that just focuses on the post out in the back where the water level is. So we know what the water's doing all the time. And I was up all night watching that post, and so I wasn't asleep when, when Phil called. In reality, it was just a matter of just, you know, it's just heartbreak. And the heartbreak is part where you know it's going to be a lot of work because we've done this a couple of times over 20 years now. So you know that that's going to be a lot. But that's not what really breaks my heart about this issue. It's, what breaks my heart is that it hinders us from being the kind of help that we can be to a community. It hinders us from being that place that can take in families. It hinders us from being that distribution center. Even though we're still distributing things and people are still coming back because they see it's the church, they brought stuff, we get it to a distribution center. Yeah. You know, we're still getting things out. And even though our food pantry and our clothes pantry, those guys are out working and hustling and collecting and, and getting things out and providing things. You know, but it, we're just not able to do it to the, to the degree that we could do it with, with, with this kind of army that we do have, with these kind of volunteers that we do have. It's... It, uh, so it, it's disheartening and breaks heart in, in that way more than any other way to me personally. You know, Lord, man, we could be doing some stuff. You know, we don't want to be the victims here. We want to be the ones who are helping the victims. And it's not the matter because we do not want to be a victim. It's because we want to help people. And so, uh, listen, just let's, let's be patient and let's be full of grace and let's be full of mercy. There's a lot yet to come and a lot yet to do. There's going to be some discomfort around here. We don't have exactly weeks. So hopefully by the end of this week. We'll have a good handle on what we can do by getting about time factors getting back into our own worship center. You know that every contractor, every carpet layer, every sheetrocker, and every painter is going to be extremely hard to get. We do praise the Lord that our insurance adjuster got here almost immediately. We spent five hours with him. This place was Thursday night, and uh, in uh, I guess it's about 8:30 when, when we pulled out of here after meeting with him. He sat out in the parking lot another three hours just so that he could you know, get his file done for, for this particular place. He told me, he said, if you hadn't provided me with, we had four plans we gave to him, with all the dimensions. He said, if you hadn't provided me that, it would be another two or three hours here. Just getting all the dimensions shot. Plus, they have to take pictures of everything and document everything. And we have to take pictures of everything and document everything. And so it's a long list, but God, you know, really blessed us by, by helping us, you know, get an adjuster here quickly. We already had one, besides our work teams that have come in to get, carpet and all that stuff out and all that mess cleaned up and so many church members that came in and just sacrificed and walked through this nasty stinky mess and have been here all week like the staff has and can't give them enough kudos and blessings and pats on the back for you know sloshing around all this mess up here all week long fighting mold and nasty smells and boxing things up and still if you walk through the office uh, you see there's still a lot of stuff to be boxed up and moved 
but you know, just thank you so much to so many who've been such an important part in our Believers Fellowship and make Amen. it happen. Amen. Those who couldn't be here, I know you were. Many of you were at other places and helping where you could get into. This hasn't been accessible here in the last few days, you know, to even get over here from many parts of where some of you live. And, you know, I was landlocked for a couple of days myself <laughs> where we were in, in Magnolia. So uh, with so much around us and so much devastation, thank you so much for your, your commitment, your labor, your sacrifice, your love, your prayers. None of that it goes beyond recognition. I mean, God sees all those things. And we need to continue, though. We've got some, some patience that we have to exercise and some sacrifices we have to exercise and some commitments that we need to make. I've had people call me already and email me and text me and say, hey, what can we do? Or here's another house needs help. We're trying to get to as many things as possible. My phone's kind of blown up for three or four days. And I know maybe somebody at some time felt like my responses were short and brief and almost a little too short and brief. <laughs> it's not that I was upset about being asked to do something. It's that I have a long list of stuff I am doing all right with that so i'm trying to find people who can help or who can do something or who can distribute something who can you know who can take on a, a challenge but if you have a need the best way to do it is just go do it yes. and notify the prayer line that you're going to do it and that's why some are doing it and then hopefully round up some people by yourself and get them going when i can and where i can and as often as i can i'm signing and answering those phone calls and trying to get people back to help in those situations but you know, don't wait around for somebody to tell you what to do. Go do it. Amen. 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 Take charge, you know. Be a warrior. Amen. Make a difference. Do something that grand, uh, grand for the glory of God. Do something that will make a difference in, in other people's lives. Because there's just a lot going on. And, and the plates are getting fuller and more full and more full. All right. As we go day by day. So be that person who jumps in and says, hey. You know, or just if you say, hey, if you'll tell somebody to call me, I want to send a team over. We'll put your name out on the e-blast or on the prayer say, hey, call so-and-so. They're going over to a house, and they're going to help. Today at 2.30, we do have a work day that we're going to, to do. For those who want to show up, uh, in fact, there's a couple of things. Not only do we need to do something here, here, Gloria Young's home still needs some work to be done. And if we get them five, six, ten people over there, it won't take any time at all to finish that because they've been working on that for a couple of days over Gloria's house. Uh, she's a widow in our church. We want to be a blessing. We'll be able to help her when we can. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, after working here on, on Friday, Kathy and I came up to do stuff. Just we could stay, get stuff done. So we were here for quite a while. We went and grabbed a quick bite to eat and said, well, let's go to Sam and Anna's and let's help there. Well, we got over there. So many of you guys already been there and already done what needed to be done that day. So blessing to you because I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't thank you enough Amen. for showing up and being there. It just makes a difference when Amen. you do that. And, you know, you think, well, all I can do is carry out trash. That's all that needs to be done sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So just carry out some trash. At 2.30 today, we've got, we got wet furnishings. Some of these things have been damaged, and they need to get out of the building and just hold in water. Some of these things have been, have been damaged mildly. Some of these things that, uh, uh, that are... are and I hate to say this, you know, when it comes to buying just like office furniture and stuff, for the most part, I'm, I'm a cheapskate. Amen. <laughs> I'm going I'm to get as much for as little as possible. You know, we don't have to have solid wood mahogany desks. All right. So most everything in our office is particle wood with a nice piece of paper over that looks like veneer. I mean, it looks like wood. It's paper. You know, all that stuff's falling out. We're going to be taking most of that out. The stuff we can salvage, we'll do it. We had a lot of these five, six-foot bookcases, about six foot or not, they ten, six-foot bookcases. That the last flood, we just split them over and cut off the bottom and made shelves out of them from supply. <laughs> so some of that stuff we'll put out under the court to say we'll cut it off later. Supplies. Some it's going to go to the dumpster. So if you've got a sawzall or something like that, we'll put four or five guys out there just breaking furniture down and putting it in the dumpster. Some of it we'll set out because people won't. So I can fix that. Well, good for you. You know, we'll let you fix it. <laughs> I am told Kathy she's been begging me for a new desk at the house. I got an idea. I'll redo the bottom, all right? I, I'll cut off the bottom, put on a new base, and polish it up, match the varnish, and get me some of that Chinese paper that looks like wood. Don't let them know the difference. Amen? Right. But we need to get that stuff out of the building, all right? Praise the Lord, we already had sheetrock cutters in here. That, that wasn't church members. That's, that's part of this uh, uh, you know, construction crew that, that's been hired to help take on some of that stuff. They're coming back Monday, all right? 
So uh, they're going to come back on Labor Day when we're out of there. Hopefully, we'll have to pack everything to the center of the rooms and kind of get the bad stuff out so they can come in and finish doing all the cuts along the walls to get that out and get, especially that back wall with the seat rock stuff. Got stuff behind it, you know, the insulation. That's got to come out or you're going to be fighting black mold the rest of your life. So as they take care of that, then you're going to have difficulty reaching the office. So if you don't have, and most of you have either mine or Tim's or Stacy's or Crystal's or Joe, somebody's phone number around here, you have it. You know, call that number because I'm probably, we're going to meet up here very early Tuesday morning with the staff, get what we need to work that week and get out of the building because we're going to heat the building up as hot as this thing can get for about three or four days. That's the best way to dry it. It's the best way that about, after about 92, 93 degrees mold out, it just starts dying. So if you do that for several days, it'll kill all that as well. So we're going to heat the building up and we're going to have dehumidifiers running at the same time, fans running, all that's being able to be set up on, on Monday. So as we get the building cleaned out, you, a lot of times you probably won't reach us. We'll have the phone machine. The only thing will be left on is probably the phone. I mean, we're even going to cut off refrigerators, ice machines, and everything. You know, so uh, phone machines should be working. We'll try to figure a way to check it out. There's some people, probably some code you can call and check it out. If not, shoot me an email. Shoot one of the staff members an email. Uh, you know, call us, text us, whatever, and we'll be in touch. But just be patient. For a few days amen as, as we get through this and as we get past this and probably within five weeks we should be back to some semblance of normalcy i don't think i've ever seen that in 20 years here but uh, <laughs> 30 years here but we have we have things that get close to, to, to moderate insanity we get by all that praise the lord but you know the biggest heartbreak is like when kathy was uh, uh yesterday she was so frustrated she was just kind of stewing around the house and you know, she gets that way, I start feeling guilty, you know, like, what am I not doing or something, you know. And I said, what is, she said, I just got to do something. I just got to do something. I just need to do something. I just, and so, but, mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm thinking, about my, well, what do you think we've been doing the last five days? Yeah. You know, it's every day. I, I said, I'm thinking, about my, I've seen you carrying out wet stuff out of your office and pushing stuff around and, you know, and, and, grabbing boxes and sorting through stuff and packing stuff. Here. What more do you need to do? Let's, you know, she actually had a half a day off with and she's worried about it. And I know her heart and I know her the gift of mercy and I know her when she you turn that TV on and she starts seeing people suffering. She she's ready to get in the car and go there and take everybody into her house. Yeah. And I keep her on a chain. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just her gift. And but you know, I'm thinking, well, look at all you've done and you're not you're not seeing it. But uh, said so you just do what you know that you can do. Not only are we going to do what we know we can do, that's the most important thing. We'll do a little more, amen? Yeah. I'm asking you to do more. I'm asking you to give more. I'm asking, I told Kathy, I said, you know, we didn't tithe last week. Be sure and put our tithe in the offering plate because we didn't have services. I said, and put this week's in there. Some people think because you missed church Sunday, you meant to give for that week. Hey, if you're going to be a tithe wad, you're always going to be a tithe wad. <laughs> amen. I would prefer the other way. You give. And I said, on top of that, I said, why don't you go ahead this week so we know more where we're going, what we need to do. Put in another check what would have been equal to our tithe and over and above our tithe. Do that this week. I have people call me tell me they're going to do that and they're going to give extra and they're doing things. That helps us do what we need to do in reaching to our families. You know, we already have a benevolence fund, but it's pretty much gone now already now of people in need and reaching out to people. So give a little extra. Put it towards, put it towards ministry. And it'll be used for ministry. It'll be put in places for ministry. And it'll get to people that have needs and we can help with. And bring the groceries. We put out the that the e-blast e about the food pantry. You know those kind of things. It's just important. You 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 can do something. Amen. So, but there are some obvious things I don't want you to miss. And uh, do we have a clicker? Or y'all clicking for me back there today? All right. Pass that up, would you? <laughs> but as you as you get into this, there are things that we can do. And I want to read from Job chapter. If you'll go to that first slide for me and follow me. Follow me through these scriptures as we read through the book of Job. This is, you know, if they, you talk about disaster and what do you do in disaster, Job is a perfect picture of that because he went through a disaster of magnitude that most of us will, will never know in our life. In Job, it says here, it happened on the day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the oldest brother's house that a messenger came to Job and said that the oxen were plowing, the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans attacked and took them. They slew the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone, I have escaped to tell you. It says, while he was still speaking, then another servant came in and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep 
and the servants and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans from three bands and made a raid on the camels, and they took them. They slew the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another servant came in and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in the oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they died. And I have escaped to tell you. And Job arose, and he tore his robe and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground, and he worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I shall return there. All right? Let me go back to a couple. Go back to this point one here. I kind of got ahead of myself with those slides. First thing he does in all this, which I think it has to be the first response whenever disaster strikes, it should be the first response whenever disaster strikes, is we just have to get ourselves before God. He just rent his garments, which was an act of repentance. It's an act of sorrow. It's an act of it's an act of humility. That you just I have nothing to per, to to present. I, I I am nothing here. And he just humbles himself before God and realizes that God is God and He is not. And he honestly just stands before the Lord, broken as a man and humble before God. Yes. Amen. You know, if one thing that these kind of events that we've just experienced in our our community and in our state certainly shows us that we're not God. Amen. I can't tell you how much I prayed over those rain events. You know, God stop the waters. God turn the clouds. God, yes. you know, in the name yes. of Jesus, I rebuke yes. the rain. Amen. Yes. In the name yes. of Jesus, I, I'm believing and praying and asking God, but it didn't happen. Amen. It didn't. And there has been times I have and he did. I really believe that God just turned it the other way. Amen. Answered our prayers. We saw God move, and it was a miracle of deliverance. But there's sometimes when it doesn't. Yes. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Amen. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Hallelujah. So he just humbles himself. I think we need to remember. I know there will be a lot of people, and there will be a lot of sermons probably from pastors today will tell us just why this happened. Oh, yeah. I just wished I was as smart as they were, but I'm not. <laughs> They'll tell us everything that God's trying to teach us a lesson, or they'll tell us that God's trying to help us, or they'll tell us that, you know, you're just a sorry, rotten sinner. You, you just judgment, or they'll tell you, you know, that you didn't have enough faith. I mean, there'll be a lot of philosophical and theological debate that goes over why Hurricane Harvey hit Houston. Amen. And why we have water in our homes. But I think instead of sitting around and trying to figure out all the whys, the very best thing we can all do is just get humble before God yes. and say, you know, Amen. you're God. Yes. And I'm not. Amen. You're God. And you're in charge. Yes. You know, and you tell us in your word, oh God, that you cause it to rain on the just as well as the unjust. Amen. And we're just going to hold on to you. But whatever the reason may, and we may know one day in heaven, amen. Yes. But whatever the reason that one escapes the flood and another doesn't escape the flood. That one escapes the disaster and another doesn't have, you know, one doesn't experience it and one doesn't. We don't know that until we stand before God ultimately. Amen. And we can pretend to have great intelligence about this issue, but we're going to be all found to be fools when it comes to discovering what the real answers are one day before our holy God. The best thing we can do, you know, is just run to God. Amen. What breaks my heart is I've watched this whole thing unfold and we, you know, we live in a world where everything's on TV anymore and on the internet. Anymore. One of the things I've discovered in the context of all that unfolding is that, you know, I just pity folks that don't have God. Yes. Yeah. You just pity people that don't know the Lord. Yes. You just hurt for people who don't have any conscience, understanding that the God is is there and He's available and He loves them, or even. To, along with that, they don't have a family like this. Yes. They don't have a church body. They don't have people that care for them and are praying for them. You know, you may feel, well, somebody had to come to rescue me. There are people praying for you. And yes. that is the greatest act of rescue, first and foremost, that anybody does for anybody else. To have a burden enough to take that individual to the Lord and to pray for them. Can you imagine those who don't know the God of all hope, who don't know the God of all peace, yes. who don't know the God of all comfort, and yes. have no hope? Absolutely. Like Paul the Apostle said, if Christ not, is not risen, we are all men to be pitied. Yes. Yes. And I believe that we are to be pitied if we don't believe God. Yes. 
This is the first thing of act of, on Job's action. He just gets to God. The second thing he does, he confesses, I'm just a man. I'm just flesh. Naked I came in, naked I'm going out. I think we're all guilty at different times for our arrogance on our part. We do all that we can to protect ourselves and ensure ourselves and make ourselves strong and defend ourselves and make every kind of action and deed to secure ourselves and we do all these things from preparing ourselves and we got insurance and insurance and all these things that we do but ultimately something like this none of that makes any difference Amen. doesn't that make we're just vulnerable people psalms 144 says man man they're just like a mere breath and their days are like a passing shadow that's a powerful thought we are vulnerable. And if you got passed over this time, praise the Lord. Maybe not next time. Amen. And in all that, we realize, again, God is God and I am not. Psalms 8 says, When I consider your heavens, and I consider the work of your fingers, and the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him, and the son of man that you care for him? God cares for us. We're, we're you know, we're just... We're just like that little feeble little ant, yeah. you know. And God cares for you. Yes. You say, well, I don't feel like God cares for me now. God's yes. taking care of you. Yes, he is. The things that are touching you, you know, you're, you're, you're still alive. And even greater than that, if your hope is in Christ, nothing here makes any difference. Amen. Ultimately, we're going to be with Amen. Jesus in glory for all eternity. Yes. Right. First Peter 4, Peter writes to the church and says, Therefore, those who suffer according to the will of God. Yes. They'll entrust their souls to the faithful creator in doing what is right. What's that mean? I'm going to look to God. I'm going to humble myself. And I'm going to realize that I have nothing, am nothing, will ever be anything without God. Amen. I need God. I need God when it's good. I need God when it's bad. And a lot of times the Lord, oh, he needs you now. You need the Lord all the time anyway. Amen. 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 The second, the third thing that he does is that he confesses that God is sovereign. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, the word Lord in the Hebrew there is the word Jehovah. And the word Jehovah means that all-existing one is the proper name of God. The one who is, well, it's the best words I can use in English, is the great I am. Yeah. I am. You am what? I am everything. I am. I, I, I am all that there is, all in one, I am. You know, the Apostle Paul said this, I am what I am because of the grace of God. God says, I am that I am. See, what's the difference? Paul is saying, I need God to be in you. God is saying, I don't need anybody to be in you. I'm God. I'm sovereign. I'm over all things. Now, before, like so many atheists love to do in these kind of situations and so many agnostics who like to run to the cameras and say, oh, this is another reason I don't believe God. Because if there's a God, all these terrible things wouldn't be happening. They forgot to read the book. Yeah. There is a God. Yeah. And God created a perfect world and put man in it and gave him charge in that perfect world. Yeah. And man said it. God didn't sin. Right. Man sinned. Amen. Satan invades the universe. Satan invades this world, becomes the liturgy, the God of this world. Yes. And he comes and corrupts the heart of all mankind. It's sin yes. at the base of all this. It's mm -hmm. disobedience to God at the base of all that's wrong in the world. Yes. All right? It's not God. God has already intervened to give an answer. He sends his son yes. in his love and his mercy. And in his son, he gives us the opportunity to come to God and to know God and to be saved and to be freed from the bondage of this world, which is sin and death, yes. and one day live without any encumberment whatsoever to get back to that perfect place and to get back to that perfect world that God has intended for us from the beginning. If you want to blame somebody, blame the devil. Yes. Blame sin. Yes. Blame corruption. Yes. That's, that's at the base of all these things, not God. This, I think this is what Job clearly understands, that God is sovereign and he is Lord of all things. And hey, that, that God is to be trusted and God is to be held on to. And God is to be believed. And so he confesses, I'm nothing, you're everything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just a man, but you're God. And I will bless your name. You yeah. give and you take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. 
That ought to be the anthem in yes. times like this. Yes. The Lord giver. The Lord takes away. Yes. Now, I don't know about you. I prefer part A of that verse. <laughs> I like it when the Lord giveth. Yes. And I always like it when the Lord taketh away. So blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, I don't understand it. If you're going to live by faith, you won't always understand it. Yes. You're just going to live by faith and trust the Lord. The fourth thing is, this way, he praises the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's a, that is a, that is a, a, a confession of praise to God. Yes. You see, he just lost everything. I mean, if you follow the story, first of all, the one guy comes in, everybody's dead. Well, I'm over here. I'm the only one left alive. Civilians came in. They killed everything. They killed all you. They killed. They took all your property and destroyed it. You got nothing over there. And while I'm telling you this, somebody kind of wants to get speak to you too. And the next guy comes in. Oh man, there's fire. Everything is blew up in fire. It just fire got the scene. It just, it just, you know, it just, it just killed everything. You know, no telling how many sheep. I'm the richest man on the planet. Just about this particular time. It's all gone, buddy. I'm the only one left alive. Third guy comes in. Excuse me, I have something I need to tell Mr. Joe. Mr. Joe, I hate to tell you this, but the Chaldeans formed three bands, bands and they raided, and they came and took every camel you own, and they, they took them. And then all the people, your employees over there, they killed every one of them. I'm the only one left alive, and I'm here to tell you about this. Excuse me, excuse me, can I talk to Mr. Joe? There's another guy, fourth guy walks in. Uh, Mr. Joe, I got some bad news. Your family's dead. Yeah? This great wind. I mean, Hurricane Harvey blew in. Four corners of the house exploded. House kill fell on and killed everybody in the house, Mr. Joe. And I, even I, am the only one left. I'm looking at those four guys as I'm reading that story. says, hey, why didn't you kill these bear bears of bad news while you're at it, you know? <laughs> Always somebody will come and give you bad news. <laughs> I'm the only one left. This is not this is not a good day for Mr. Job, is it? No, it's not. It's a bad day. Mm -hmm. I've lost everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He just makes this confession of faith. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know, I, I, we I, we all experience losses in our life. Yes. Sometimes property, sometimes loved ones, mm -hmm. and we know that's not the first response. Always is it? Mm -hmm. My mind was going through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. My heart's racing. I've experienced a lot of emotions as I'm getting bad news, as you have. And that took me, I, you know, I can't honestly say, I just said, well, blessed be the name of the Lord, Lord, give take away. It took me a while to get to where Job's at. <laughs> I had to process some things, yeah. sit on the side of the bed, walk around the house a few times. Yeah. It's, I found that one thing I have discovered, it's taken me a while to discover, is just keep your mouth shut for now. Mm -hmm. It's usually when you open your mouth, you get in trouble. Amen. I guess that's what Kathy tells me. Amen. <laughs> Open your mouth, get in trouble. But I finally just said, you know, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord giveth and the Lord takes away. Yes, yes. You've got to confess. What is that confession? It says, when you say blessed be the name of the Lord, you're saying, I trust you. Yes. I don't understand this. I don't like this, but I trust you. And it has, I think it, it has to be said. It has to be spoken. Your ears need to hear you. Yes. It's nice yes. to put it in your mind and your heart, but it needs to make it all the way to your mouth. Amen. And your mouth needs to say, I trust you. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm looking on the faces of people I've known for a long time, many of you, and I know your losses, and I know what you've walked through, and I know where the pain has been in so many of your hearts in life and so many different times in your life. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you bear this testimony out. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't understand this, and I don't like it. The Apostle Paul said, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus Amen. concerning you. Now, it doesn't say for everything give thanks, because yes. I certainly mm -hmm. have not been thankful for everything. But in yes. things, yes. in the midst of the crisis, yes. in the midst of the storm, we can say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. It's our confession of faith. And what else do you have but faith, which is your, con is your connection, is what you're holding. It's my way of holding on to God. I believe you, and I trust you, and, I'm, and I, I claim you. Grabbing some, I know I didn't get dressed up for church today. You'll have to forgive me. I had one of the men at the other campus say, you're wearing jeans to church. I said, you want a Barbie doll or a pastor? <laughs> yeah, and that gets me in trouble, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't apologize. 
got some Barbies in the nursery. I think you go dress one of them, okay? Go get one. <laughs> but I reached in the closet to grab a T-shirt. And I looked up there, and I saw one of those old Believer shirts that says on the back of the I Believe. I said, that's the one I'm wearing today. And I grabbed that for work day later. I believe. I believe. I believe. And that's where you are. And that's where you, you've experienced it before that. Just experience it again in your life because that is our answer. That is our hope. But it's not just, it's not just in saying it. And I believe that once we speak it, God begins to just confirm it in our spirit and our heart. We just begin to praise the Lord. It has to be our first verbal response. Yes. It needs to be because then it, it was like David said, when everything was falling apart and his men, old men were speaking to of killing him, it says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. How do you do that? You just praise the Lord. Amen. You know, it's not getting back to oh, you're just a good old guy. You're going to be okay. You're the best, the best. You know, you're wonderful. You know, all that me talk we get in the world today. Yeah. No, it's different. Than saying God, you're the best. Yes. You're going to take care of me. He, You've made a promise yes. to me. You're my God. I believe you. I trust you. You're with me. You have. You never leave me. You never forsake me. Read Romans 8 today. Blow your mind once again. Read it with passion. That nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yes. Nothing. And the list is long in Romans 8. And it's after the list. So we praise the Lord by faith. Yes. The catch, five. Because it's easy to get up to four. Well, not so easy. But it can be done. The five is where we have to be careful. It says, though all of this, Job did not sin, nor did he blame God. Literally, when it says this word sin, the way it's used in this verse is to, it, we know it to miss the mark, go the wrong direction. It's literally here. It has to do, he chose to go the right way. What helps you go the right way? When you do one, two, three, and four. One, where you humble yourself before God. Two, where you, you realize and confess to God that you're just a person. Three, where you confess that he's God and you're not. Four, when you begin to praise him and honor him and to bless his name. Then, you're on the right track, the next step. Going the right direction. Yes. He didn't sin. Yes. He didn't go the wrong way. He didn't rebel against God. He didn't say, if this is the way you treat me, God, then this is the way I'm going to treat you. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, if that's, I don't deserve this, so I'm going to go do what I want to do. And I, would, and I know people have done that with God. Mm -hmm. They completely rejected and resisted what God had for their life. They said, He didn't go the wrong way. He chose the right thing. And the last, number six, says, He did not accuse God. In other words, it won't translate, he didn't charge God of folly. I love passage in Proverbs where it says, Who has ascended into heaven and descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fifth? Who has wrapped the waters in his garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name or his son's name? Surely you know. I do know. Do you? His name is Jesus. Amen. He has ascended. He has descended. Yes. He has descended to the planet. He's gone below to hell. For yes. us, where he led captivity captive, where he took the keys back to life and death from the enemy. We know who it is that's ascended. We know it is who has gathered the wind in his fist, who's wrapped the waters in his garments, who's established all the ends of the earth. His name is Jesus. Yes. And he can be trusted, and he can be believed. We just need to trust him. Deuteronomy puts it this way. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. What is the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things revealed belong to us and our sons forever, that we may observe all the words of his law. What does that mean? That means there's going to be some things you just don't get an answer to. Amen. But what you do have an answer to, that's what you do. Yes. Kathy kept moping around, frustrating, stressing the other day. I said, what she said, what do I do? I said, why don't you just go do what you know to do? Do what you know to do. 